agriculture and more particularly for the cause of uh, uh, soil science he is an excellent uh, teacher handling classes for uh, all the agricultural program including um, ug pg and uh, uh, phd he has completed uh, five external funded projects and come out with some useful findings for the benefit of various uh, uh, stakeholders and currently operating uh, uh, two ongoing research projects so one is uh, uh, i grip on micronutrients micronutrients and second nutrients and also pollutant elements then the second project uh, is being operated by our guest speaker is indo german uh, collaborative uh, a research project he has guided uh, 19 msc agricultural students 12 phd students and acted as a member of advisory committee for more than uh, 200 uh, students he is actively participating in many professional uh, societies to specifically quote he served as a counselor of uh, iss in new delhi currently he is serving as a secretary iss uh, bangalore uh, uh, chapter he got many honors and uh, awards for his uh, research contribution he received a national award for outstanding contribution in uh, mulberry research best teacher award from icr and we know very well getting uh, teacher award from icr is very difficult but even then our guest speaker has got uh, this pre- prestigious award from the Uh, icr and also best teacher from uh, uh, uas bangalore also then he received the eminent scientist award from nesa and he is the fellow of nesa new delhi he has published uh, more than uh, 60 articles in uh, peer reviewed uh, uh, journals besides the author of four book chapters and uh, two books to share his uh, uh, scientific knowledge and thoughts he has visited uh, uh, foreign countries like uh, finland france and uh, uh, germany so he is the right person uh, person to deliver uh, the guest lecture on uh, sp- spatial variability of uh, micronutrient in soil so i request all the uh, students and our staff members to have uh, interaction with our uh, guest speaker and make this program a successful one so with this brief introduction So I invite our uh, guest speaker to deliver his uh, uh, talk. Respected uh, Dean of Postgraduate Studies, Dean A.U. Kaimuthu, respected uh, Dean College of Agriculture and uh, Research Institute, uh, Dr. P. P. Mahendran Mahendran, respected HOD Madam and former HOD Sir and other faculty of the department and uh, students friends. Uh, as our uh, beloved P. P. Mahendran Sir has. Uh, explained a lot of things about me so i would like to give a, a brief uh, special variability of micronutrients in soils and mapping management and nutrition uh, arvind kumar shukla is actually he was a project coordinator of this project he was uh, sits in bhopal now he is a vice chancellor at uh, uh, raja vijaraj sinde on gwalior university right now but earlier he was a PC project coordinator and myself dr sita subrayappa and uh, principal professor and head and working as a Principal Engineer of the ASRP and MSP. This ASRP MSP started in 1964 at TNAU, Gujarat, and Andhra Pradesh. Either to Karnataka, it was not there. In 2015, for before that, five years back, I wrote a I wrote we I wrote a project to the ICR. With great difficulty, we got the ECRI project. Getting ECRI project to the institutions is very very difficult. But you see, TNAU got 1964. TNAU got 1964. Please remember. But Andhra Pradesh got 1964, Gujarat got 1964, but Karnataka it was not there. And Karnataka and Kerala, we got uh, we we fought with ICR and we got it. This project it is running now. Um, in fact, Kerala has also got it. And uh, PC was very happy about uh, giving this project. So I should say thanks to first that Arvind Kumar Shukla for giving budget as ad hoc project, not right now the full project. Start with. Uh, So soils of India are generally poor in fertility, with especially organic carbon, nitrogen, and phosphorus because of highly mining in soils. And huge variability in micronutrients can be seen in uh, all over India. About uh, it is learned that about 25 metric tons are mining uh, 
from the soils. The current level of production is uh, for this 23 million tons, about 1884.4 thousand tons of micronutrients. Zinc is 23.9, iron is 10.6, and copper is 37.4, man is 63.3, boron 9.2, and molybdenum 0.9, and are shipping away from soils annually. Just imagine. And the rampant micronutrient deficiency can be seen uh, along with uh, NPK and sulfur. Zinc is 39.9, iron is 12.6, copper is 4.6, manganese is 6%, and boron is 22.9. So among the micronutrients, zinc and iron, zinc and boron are the most important micronutrients which are mining away from the soils. So soils low in micronutrient produce, food feed fodder and low in, low in micronutrient content and density. The extent of micronutrient deficiency in Indian soils are as C. This is the record of uh, two, two lakh soil samples collected from the Ekrip micronutrients from the uh, 508 uh, districts of the country. So it is learned that zinc is uh, deficiency is alarming 36.5, followed by boron 23.2 percent. Copper is very, very less. Deficiency is very, very less. In fact, in Karnataka, we have 30 districts. I have delineated 29 districts. Out of that, same trend is followed about zinc and boron, but copper is rich in our soils, iron is rich in soils, but depends on the soil pH again. <coughs> the micronutrient fertilizer consumption vis-a-vis -vis food grain production in the country during last decade. You see this uh, line, so this yellow line uh, goes up as the production increase. In 2013 and 14, you see, the production is higher compared to the application of micronutrients. The production is higher, sorry. Production is higher compared to the, product, uh, the application of fertilizers. In 2014 and 15, the production is very, very less in spite of application of a huge quantity of micronutrient fertilizers. Uh, 15 and 16, of course, uh, uh, production is increased and uh, compared to the micronutrient applications. The proper diagnosis is the key for suggesting suitable corrective measures. You see the zinc deficiency in tomato, boron deficiency, pomegranate tracking, and zinc deficiency in mice. And uh, so, so zinc deficiency in the grapes and also and yellowing in crops and also boron deficiency in cauliflower. So development of micronutrient deficiencies in uh, four stages. One is stage one, stage two, stage three, stage four. In stage one, depletion of micronutrients stored in the body. Stage two, impairment of micronutrient dependent on bio biochemical functions. Stage three, measurable the changes in cellular and physiological functions. And stage four is appearance of structural and functional lesions. Therefore, in stage one itself, diminishing degree of saturation of the carriers and enzymes, and the stage four is symptoms are clinical signature signs. The symptoms can be able to see as the stage four reaches. These are the important symptoms we can be able to see by uh, human beings. So nowadays, uh, uh, the ASRP and micronutrient project is not only seeing an, in the deficiency of the nutrients in soils and plants, but also continuum in animals and human beings. So National Institute of Animal Nutrition and Physiology at uh, GK uh, at Bangalore, Kadukodi. So now they are taking up the continuum of micronutrient deficiencies in animals, in animals or ruminants. But uh, human, human, human beings uh, uh, in uh, New Delhi and uh, Bhopal is taking up the, that kind of research work. So the deficiency of micronutrients from the soil, soils to plants, plants to animals, animals to human beings. So that kind of research work is being done by the All India Current Research Project at uh, uh, different places. So geostatical techniques used for the to identify the spatial patterns or trend and map of given attributes across the landscape to improve the efficiency of sampling networks or strategy, vocational identification for remediation and predict the future scope of land use planning. For use of geostatical methods, appropriate sampling must be considered for that we have to go for objective of the study and appropriate data collection and go for analysis. The analysis of data depend on the objectives of the study and the proper data collection. Data collection is very, very important and uh, compared to analysis of the samples. There are five step approach for appropriate sampling <clears throat> to define the objectives and questions to be answered. To summarize the environmental context, context, context for the quantitative being measured, identify the population, including spatial and temporal extent, select an appropriate sampling design and document the sampling design and rationally. The sampling units, in some cases, sampling units are di di discrete entities, but in others, the sampling unit may be investigator defined and ar arbitrarily sized. The statistical sampling leads to description of the sample num members of the population and inferences and conclusions about population as a whole. 
So the sampling methods include stratified sampling, systematic sampling, cluster sampling, and the grid sampling, and etc. <clears throat> this is a sampling sites of uh, Morena district of Madhya Pradesh. The spatial variability of available zinc in soils of Morena district of Madhya Pradesh as follows. The yellow, the, the yellow is in, in, indicates the, the distribution of 4 to 12 percent, but uh, red is in, says less than 0.2 percent. Uh, 5.2 percent. However, 48 samples are deficient in uh, uh, zinc. Regarding sampling the sites of Bhopal district of Madhya Pradesh, includes the spatial variability of zinc in soils of Bhopal district as follows. It is less than 0.4 uh, percent. Uh, the red, red color. This pointer is there. So spatial variability of iron in uh, uh, so, so soils of Bhopal district. So almost yellow color indicates the sufficiency of uh, micronutrients iron content and the red increase the less deficiency of the micronutrient. Again, the triggering output of and prediction of the, the micronutrients, stratified sampling, random sampling in Telangana state, agriculture, Telangana state. So the yellow red color indicates the less than 0.3% or 2.2% of uh, samples are deficient. And the green color indicates more than 1.5%, that is, uh, two point, uh, it, it is sufficient. And the spatial variability of zinc in Telangana state also indicates that uh, the red indicates uh, the richness of the micronutrients and uh, zinc content, and the green color indicates the sufficiency of the micronutrient. <clears throat> Similarly, you have conducted uh, status of distribution of available iron in Haryana, status and distribution of available zinc in Andhra Pradesh, status and distribution of available zinc in Madhya Pradesh, and status and distribution of DTP zinc in Uttarakhand, and status and distribution of uh, available uh, zinc in Madhya Pradesh. So regarding uh, special variability in available zinc deficiency status in size of India, so it is very, very important uh, uh, map. Less than 10% uh, is green color and more than 50% is red color. So where, so where it stands, Tamil Nadu now, increase, indicating that more than 50% of soils are rich in uh, nutrients. Isn't it? So special variability of iron deficiency status in size of uh, India. So here also Tamil Nadu. More than 25% uh, of soils are red in color, less than 5% are the green in color. There are northeastern states, uh, you can see nothing. Even uh, the, 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 the maps which are in uh, white color is not at all indicate anything. But the red, the blue, and the yellow indicates the deficiency, subsistence, and the highest content of micronutrients in Indian soils. So in Karnataka, actually, since the ASRP micronutrients started, we have delineated about 29 districts of Karnataka, and uh, only one district left over. Before my retirement, before my retirement at August, I will finish it off and submit the data to the Ekri Micronutrient Project at Bhopal. So, by, so that they can take up the entire micronutrient special special variability of all the micronutrients, especially zinc, iron, manganese, and boron in Karnataka state. So, this is the special variability of available manganese deficiency status in soils of soils of India. So, red color shows more than 20 percent. It is North India. Almost all the southern states are indicating uh, uh, green color. That is less than 1%. A special variability of available copper deficiency states status in size of India is the green color indicates the less than 1% and more than 20% indicates red color. The current status of boron deficiency in Indian soils, there are many uh, districts or states indicating many uh, percentage of uh, deficiency of boron. But in Odisha, it is 51.8%, West Bengal, 46.3%, Gujarat, 35.1%, Bihar, 33.2%, Assam, 17.7%, Uttar Pradesh, 16.2%, Tamil Nadu, 10.2%, and Uttarakhand, 6.2%, Madhya Pradesh, 3.3%, Haryana, 3.3%, Andhra Pradesh, 1.6%, overall, 16.3% deficiency of uh, Boran. But Karnataka picture is not there. See there? So next to Karnataka will come because they have given project now. So the data will go to the PC unit of Madhya Pradesh, Bhopal, Indian, Indian Institute of Soil Science. So they will predict now the deficiency of boron in soils. But Tamil Nadu, it is already there, 10.2 deficiency, deficiency area. <clears throat> then it is not only the uh, single nutrient deficiency, but the multi micronutrient deficiency is also very important. Multi micronutrient and secondary nutrient deficiency in soils, sulfur and zinc is 9.9, .9, and zinc and boron is 8.3. And we see zinc, iron, boron is 1.1%. If, if you see the deficiency of zinc and boron, 
uh, is uh, high, irrespective of the combination of the nutrients. So sulfur and zinc is 9.9. .9. Boron, so either zinc or boron in combination of any other nutrient is increasing high. In all the cases, you can see boron, 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 zinc, zinc. In one or two cases, only iron you can able to see. The first one is zinc, again boron, again boron, again iron, iron, zinc, again zinc, again boron, That's boron, boron again boron. So irrespective of the multi-microbial nutrient, zinc and boron is a prominent in giving different symptoms in soils. So the microbial management, <laughs> there is supply and demand. Supply in the form of indigenous nutrient supply capacity of soils, status of nutrient deficiency and ecosystem environment, and the demand is crop type, crop plan, yield, and yield target. There is a manipulation in agronomic techniques, growing tolerant crops, and apply manures and fertilizers, like method of application, time of application, rate of application, source of application, Frequency of application is very important in management of micronutrients. So there are, uh, this is very important uh, slides, wherein if you see the zinc and nitrogen, phosphorus, potassium, we have the low, medium, high category, but for micronutrients, it is not there. It is not there. If you see micronutrient like zinc, we can say just less than 0.6% is, uh, you know, um, deficiency. But uh, subsidiary, uh, subsidiary and uh, uh, low, medium, high, it is not here. Acute deficiency, deficiency, marginally deficient, marginally sufficient, adequate, high, this is a category that has been developed by the ASRP micronutrients. <clears throat> so for each category, how much you have to apply? We about 5, 5 kg to 3 kg, 3 to 3, 2.5, 2 kg, etc. has to be added. That is the application of uh, uh, micronutrients. Similarly, for iron, we have acute deficiency, deficient, less than 2.5 acute deficiency, deficient, and more than 10.5 is high in nature. If it is high, no need of iron application. If it is a deficiency, uh, irrespective of the categories, 50 kg of sulfate, 40 kg, 30 kg. Again, three, three the foliar spray of 1% of FESO4, 2% of foliar, foliar spray, 1% of uh, FESO4, 1% foliar, foliar spray like that, you have, they have adequate, they have given it. And the manganese also, we have less than 1.0 is acute deficiency, and more than 9 point uh, is uh, milligrams per kg is uh, high. Here we have to add again uh, 50 kg, 20 kg, 20 kg, again, uh, 1% foliar spray for the 7 to 9, etc. And boron recommendation also given. It is if it is less than 0.2 is acute deficiency, deficient, and more than 1.10 is high high in deficient. But application is 2 kg boron, 1.5 kg boron, 1 kg boron. And uh, if it is 9 to 1.1 adequate, no need of application of borax, etc. No need of application of if it is more than 1.10. But but what is the recommendation? Uh, what what is the Typical limit usually we seen in the literature is 0.5% ppm. Boron is 0.5 ppm, but uh, where it stands, 0.5 to 0.7 is marginally deficient. But ASRB micronutrients uh, is given a different uh, uh, low, medium, high category of micronutrients, but it is not available in elsewhere except uh, this project. So this is about the spatial variability, and uh, we have some, uh, as our Mahindra sir has told, you bring some uh, students' activities, research also to present uh, in the uh, this thing. So this is the studies of micronutrients in horticulture crops, whereas uh, now called cauliflower, cabbage, we conducted some boron and zinc studies. That I would like to highlight here. So studies on soil and further application of zinc on growth and yield of now coal. So this is the RD, RD, RDF and uh, FIM 12.55. And these are the treatments like uh, 2 kg, 4 kg, 6 kg, 8 kg of zinc sulfate. Uh, zinc through zinc sulfate and 1 kg, 2 kg, 3 kg of zinc, uh, zinc, uh, zinc sulfate along with 0.14% uh, of zinc through the further application. Among these, the treatment 9, that is uh, T1 RDF and the 4 kg of zinc to zinc sulfate as soil application and 1.14% of zinc to zinc sulfate as further application is, is, uh, is this is a layout and experiment of the students. And the total soluble solids, ascorbic acid, yield returns per hectare, zinc uptake and the PC ratio is very important. Treatment T9, that is RDF and 4 kg of zinc through zinc sulfate for soil application and 0.14% of zinc through zinc sulfate as a further application is uh, good and increasing yield and uptake of zinc also. And BC ratio is, uh, you can able to see 3.48. 3.48 is very good BC ratio for null coal. So these are the null coal crop. And uh, we have also studied the effect of sources and levels of boron on growth and yield of quality of null coal. So here also we applied uh, boron 1.1 uh, kg, 1.6 kg, 2.2, 4.4, and uh, 
again uh, lower level of 0.5 kg, 0.75, even 1 kg of boron through application of further spray 0.05, 0.05 percent of boron. Among this, 1.5 kg of boron per hectare through borax acyl application and 0.05 percent of boron through boric acid. This further application is given a very good uh, yield. Proto soluble solids, ascorbic acid, and yield turns per hectare and boron uptake and BC ratio is 3.87 compared to null coal. So this is um, BC ratio is uh, I mean, this ratio, ratio of boron is very high compared to zinc. See, this is a very important observation we can able to see. We never expected that the splitting of uh, null coal without application of boron. So this is a farmer's practice, T10. Farmer's practice, they apply four bags of urea, 3.5 kg of uh, bags of DAP and four bags of MOP for the crop. But since they are not applying uh, borax for long uh, time to the soils, we could able to see, we could able to observe the cracking of the null coal. Tracks. <clears throat> so boron deficient in uh, not only in the nurple, but also in all uh, nuts and uh, uh, fruits, you can able to see the splitting of boron. So here also the application of 2.2 kg of boron through borax, a soil application, and 0.2% boron through borax acid as further spray is given very good yield for. So here total soluble solids, ascorbic acid, yield turns per hectare, boron uptake, and BC ratio is uh, followed very good in case of uh, cauliflower. But compared to other other parameters, the species ratio is uh, double in case of uh, cauliflower compared to null pollen, etc. So this is the yield product. Then the studies on size of application of zinc on soil properties, growth and yield of quality of cauliflower also we have conducted. Here we have for application of 4 kg of zinc per hectare through zinc sulfate as a soil application and 0.5% of zinc through zinc sulfate as further application is recorded very good uh, uh, crop. So this is the student and they are applying. And uh, since uh, the BC ratio is uh, 4.30, the BC ratio is very important. So among the coal crops, the BC ratio increases from uh, 2.5 to 4.3 by application of zinc and boron crops. So these are the cauliflower curd. So we had uh, one project uh, from America. So they have given us one metallocyte. Metallocyte project, that is a zinc and boron metallocyte. This zinc and boron metal set uh, has applied for the grapes and pomegranate. We got a very good uh, uh, yield that is uh, given by IFCO company. So application of four year application of 0.1% of zinc to zinc metal set. So he is actually project coordinator, visited our field. And she is uh, my student, now he is assistant professor at the Shumaga Agricultural University. So this is the experimental sites where application of uh, zinc metal set increased very good yield in uh, grapes. So the effect of further spray of quality of parameters yield and fruit zinc content, grapes are influenced by sources and levels of zinc, but the BC ratio is uh, just 1.48. In coal crops, you can able to see from 2.5 to 4.8 BC ratio, whereas in grapes, I, I, we hardly got 1.48, uh, uh, you know, BC, BC ratio. So this is the grapes by application of uh, zinc uh, metal acid and the boron metal acid. Now we, we are applying for zinc metal acid also for the grapes. So further application of 0.10% of zinc to zinc metal acid has increased very well. So this is the pomegranate. We are just taking the yield of that in the formal field of Chikbalapur. And the BC ratio is 7.74. See, compared to grapes, the BC ratio of pomegranate is very, very high. 7.74 because of the yield increase is very high in compared to the uh, grapes. The pomegranate, is we got an excellent uh, crop. So the combination of a boron and zinc metal acid also we have applied for the crops, by application of polar spray of 0.05% of zinc, so zinc metal acid, we got very good yield, a 2.66 BC ratio, and the polar spray 0.05% of zinc through zinc metal acid. This is the uh, farm, farmer and the interaction with the project coordinator and myself, and he visited our field. The BC ratio is 9.53, we are recorded by application of boron and zinc metal acid. Metal acid is a, actually, uh, very uh, liquid uh, fertilizer for uh, zinc and boron. So we have done some um, critical limit experiments to determine the critical limits of zinc for tomato growing soils and the tomato crop. Uh, we have done some particle experiment. So we have taken the size samples of 225, 225 samples collected from the 15 loca locations. And uh, these are treatments we have given, 5 kg, 10 kg, 15, 20 kg. And a brace percentage yield also we have calculated and crop response also we have calculated. And uh, the physical chemical properties of experimental sites are as follows. 
So what is important, I will just uh, highlight here. The, the soils are categorized into low zinc soils, medium zinc soils, and high zinc soils. The, sam the samples are collected with uh, GPS coordinates, and these are the villages selected, and these are the available zinc magnesium, sorry, milligrams per kg. It is ranges from 0.17 to 0.24 per uh, low zinc soils, 0.7 to 1.16 is medium zinc soils, 3.53 to 4.87 per uh, uh, high zinc soils. These are the low, medium, high zinc soils we collected and selected as follows. Now, what is imp very important is we have a, we received a, a mail from uh, project coordinator to go for um, extractants of multi micronutrient extractant to be determined uh, by this uh, uh, project. So, we have taken the different extractants like DTPA zinc, ABDTPA zinc, Mehalich 3 zinc, 0.1 HCL zinc. One normal ammonium state uh, pH 7 uh, zinc, one normal ammonium state uh, pH 4.6 and zinc, 0.01% normal EDTA zinc, and 0.01 molar EDTA, one, one normal HCL uh, ammonium state uh, zinc extractants. So these are the extractants we have used for the extraction of uh, low, medium, high soils. So these are the check yield and maximum yield and uh, brace percent yield we calculated, and the yield response also we calculated for low, medium, high soils. So there is a very good correlation between brace percent yield and also DTPA zinc and also ABDTPA zinc and mehalic zinc. Amid, compared to all these extractants, the most prob probably DTPA zinc and ABDTP and mehalic zinc has correlated very well for the brace percent yield. So we can use uh, ex extensively for extract extraction of zinc boron, zinc boron, uh, uh, sorry, zinc iron magnesium copper. We can use only one extractant that is DTPA or ABDTP or mehalic. So among this, the DTP has recorded a 0.78, uh, 0.781 uh, correlation. So we can use DTP also or ABDT per mehlich also. So these are the critical limits we have, you have calculated. DTP soil test for milligrams per 1.12. This is a uh, ABDT soil test value. This is a critical limit 1.20. So this is a mehlich 3 soil test value for 2.15 uh, critical limit. And these are the zinc content in plant samples is 34 milligrams per kg. And zinc content in the fruits is 66 milligrams per kg. And uh, we have, uh, so far we have done it by uh, statistical method. I mean, the graphical method, that's Keter Nelson. And we have uh, compared with uh, uh, statistical method, method also. So graphical method and, uh, and uh, statistical method almost, almost are matching with each other. If you see the statistical method, Statistical method it is a 0 0.014 and 1.11 is observed. And just skip all these things. These are the low zinc soils of the crop at uh, medium zinc soils, crop, the high zinc soils. Yes, this is very, very important. The critical limits of zinc in soil, plant, and fruit crop, potato, tomato. So, graphical method is uh, 1.12 for ABDTPA, DTP extended is 1.12, Mehalis 3, 2.15. So the percent variation between the two methods of statistical and the graphical method is hardly 3.57, 7.55, and 0.46 percent. So, so easily you can easily you can use either of these three extractants for extraction of zinc, iron, magnesium, and copper. Earlier, we, so far we are using only DTP extractant, DTP extractant, but we can use ABDTP and Mehlich 3 extractant also for the extraction of zinc, iron, magnesium, and copper. So this is how he has moved from. Uh, project coordinator in Bhopal to all, all over the states. The critical number of zinc in plant also we have calculated. Plant zinc is 34 and the fruit zinc is 66 for graphical method. And the statistical method is 32 to 70.5. And the percent variation between two methods is uh, 5.88 and 6.81. So this is a critical limit of zinc in plant, same, same thing. And the range of, uh, we also calculated the range, the critical limits of zinc in soil, plant, and the fruit of crop. Low is less than 1.96, optimum is 0.97 to 1.53, high is less, more than 1.5 for DTP, ABDTP extractant, and DTP extractant is less than 1.058, and then high is 1.99, and minus 3 extractant zinc is less than 1.98 and more than 2.5, like, like this. So this kind of uh, work uh, is very important. So uh, by saying the critical limit of less, just say the less than 0.6%, less than 0.6 ppm is not a very important, but low, medium, or high optimum is very, very important for uh, put a, for, for fertilizer recommendation for the each and every crop. This is what we did for tomato crop. Similarly, critical limit for zinc in plant samples also did it. 
less than 31.5 pi ppm is low and uh, 32.5 ppm is high optimum is 31.5 to 32.5 in the fruit, uh, in also amount of fruit also, we have calculated the uh, critical limits less than 66.5, 66.5 to 70.5, more than 70.5. <coughs> this is actually field crop. So these are the part experiment you did. It. Sorry. Yeah. So he is actually a student of uh, Potakani Professor from Andhra Pradesh. Now he has become a student professor. The correlation coefficient of extractants with the plant responses as follows. So, press percent yield, yield response, zinc content in shoot, zinc content in shoot also we have calculated. DTP, zinc, and ABDTP, and Mehlich has got a highly, very good uh, correlated with uh, uh, extractants. Whereas, the yield response has given, given the negatively correlated with uh, DTP ex extractants. And zinc uptake is also highly significantly correlated. Zinc content in shoot also significantly and highly correlated. And the brace percent yield also very good uh, correlation is uh, observed. So we did some work on uh, zinc in mul uh, critical limits of phosphorus and zinc in mulberry also. So the estimates of nutrients removal, deficiency, substance, and higher limits of uh, M5 mulberry variety, nutrients removed, low substance, and high also we have calculated for, for the mulberry crop. You, you, you know, you know the mulberry crop, isn't it? Yes. Is there yes. mulberry soil, mulberry in cocoon? Cocoon, reeling, and uh, sari, and purchasing. Yes, Silk worms. Silk worms. So this is the this, this is our risk norms we have calculated for this project. Uh, risk norms are very important. So it indicates deficiency, low, optimum, high, and excess. So this is very very very, very important. In fact, uh, uh, this the statistical tool we, we I collected from the Indian Institute of Horticulture Research Institute at Esergatta in Bangalore. Then we adapted for the mulberry crop. So almost all the nutrients you can able to calculate for the major nutrients and zinc also and uh, second and uh, major nutrients. So for mulberry crop, we have taken the critical limit of soil available phosphorus for mulberry is 18 uh, ppm. The critical limit of leaf phosphorus in mulberry is 0.178. And the critical limit of soil available uh, zinc for mulberry is 1.78. And the critical limit of leaf zinc in mulberry is uh, 27.1 ppm and etc. So lastly, so they have also asked us to go for some uh, symptomological studies. Symptomological studies. Studies of uh, symptomological studies, I mean, uh, doing is very, very difficult. In the field, it is very, very, it is very difficult to get the symptoms. Even though if symptoms occurs, you could not, it is very difficult to identify whether it is a single nutrient deficiency or a double nutrient deficiency or multi micronutrient or multi nutrient deficiency. So for that, uh, what I did was, so I had taken the battery containers. This is also very important for the students. If they wanted, they can also, also do it. These are the battery containers. In the battery containers, I took uh, quads of sand. Quads, quads of sand. So this is the sand actually, quads. So what I did was I powdered it, just like a soil. And uh, by taking a 2 mm sieve, I sieved it. Then after sieving, I put it in the battery containers. So not only cut, putting in the battery containers, I have washed it with the tap water, washed with the uh, uh, 0.1 normal HCl repeatedly, and then washed with the tap water, and again tap, washed with the distilled water. See that it should not contain any contamination of either any of the kind of nutrients in that. It is a completely nutrient free for sand we have maintained. And then uh, we have prepared the Hogland nutrient media and we have planted mulberry plant here. So this is a minus P, minus phosphorus and control. Control plant looks very good, whereas minus phosphorus is not, looks like stunted, stunted growth. For a very weekly interval, we took the observations what exactly happening on the leaf, on the roots. So it is like this. For every week, you could be able to see some standard growth and yellowing. And left side also, you can see minus phosphorus, yellowing also, we can, we can see. Every week, we have taken the observations, A, B, C. That's the one week. Again, fruits are also coming, but growth is very, very less. Again, you can see the yellowing of the tip margin. Here, then uh, yellowing is uh, very severe and then started necrosis. And uh, again, leaf completely become uh, necrosis. And the last slide, it, it can able to see uh, one 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 uh, plant, there is no leaves at all. Another plant, all the leaves are shedding out from the plant. So there is no leaf at all. Last plant, leaf are, leaf, leaves are getting shedded. This is uh, taken every every week interval photographs. Now, this is very important. Minus P roots and control C. So wherever we put phosphorus, the roots are very good. 
wherever you see, can you see minus p, the roots are very less. So why we have to apply phosphorus in basal application? Root development. So this is a very good answer for that. So it is coincident. If you do, if you do not apply phosphorus in basal application, root development will be completely hinders. So this Hoagland nutrient media, every day we are adding 100 ml, 100 ml per part, um, uh, per part. There are uh, for each part containing uh, two plants. Similarly, we conducted for uh, the last we were able to see the minus phosphorus in no leaves, where the control is same as that of uh, previous. These are Hoagland, Hoagland nutrient media. Similarly, we did for zinc also. See the magnitude of variation of difference between phosphorus and zinc. The phosphorus, we could be able to see very good standard growth, but the zinc, we could not be able to identify it. It is not that much magnitude, difference is concerned. See the, the C is the control, we have played the same Hoagland nutrient media. So this is minus zinc Hoagland nutrient media. The plants are looks alike. It does not look like a difference in terms. But every interval of every week, if we keep on observing the observations, we could be able to see the white patches, white lines on the veins of the plant, mulberry leaf. Later, it, it is got it started with the shrinking. You can see the white patches, no growth. You can, you can see the leaf is getting uh, uh, spindle. You can see the leaf is get squeezes. Here also, you can see the leaf is getting uh, shortened and the yellowing started later on. So the yellowing started from the uh, entire margin of the plant leaf, and then it has started from the older leaves. But uh, zinc deficiency in the, cannot be seen in older leaves. Zinc deficiency cannot be seen in older because it, it is partially moves. We can see in the younger leaves also, in older leaves also. But unlike phosphorus and uh, nitrogen, nitrogen, phosphorus, potassium, zinc deficiency cannot be seen. But in mulberry, you could be able to see yellowing in the older leaves. Older leaves. And also you can see this uh, margin yellowing and also a tip burning of the leaf. I see yellowing started severely. So yellowing again started very well. This is the two month crop. This crop will be over by two months. And you can see the sickle shape of the leaf and curling of the leaf. And these are the parts we have used for the experimentation. Yes, last but one slide, way forward. Correct all the existing nutrient deficiencies. Don't create any toxicity. Keep your eyes on efficiency instead of deficiency. Barriers on in loading mechanotrient in food and grain, enhanced nutrient promoting and improving the bioavailability of nutrients, emphasis on agronomic and physiological intervention for better mechanotrient absorption and translocation to edible parts of the crops is very important. So the history of every nation is eventually written in the way in which it, it cares for its soil. Franklin Roosevelt, president of ESA, so he, he healthy soil, healthy crop, healthy food, Healthy human. Thank you. Thank you for highlighting various points related to your topic.